Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we are going to be talking about how to decorate a small space. This is for those of you that are living in an apartment or living in a smaller home and you're sort of struggling with how to decorate a small space, which I get because usually you walk into these stores like RH or Crate and Barrel and they have these massive pieces of furniture or you look at Architectural Digest and you're like, yeah, it's amazing if you're living in like a 5,000 square foot home, but if you're living in a 500 square foot apartment, uh, some of those tips don't necessarily work as well. So I totally get it. I used to live in a 500 square foot apartment. Um, we had to take the door off of our bedroom in order to fit in a queen size bed. Like I completely understand living in a small space. Now, but first I want to thank our sponsor for this video, HelloFresh. As some of you might know, because I've mentioned on this channel a couple of times, I actually really love to cook. But over the last year, I've eaten more takeout than I probably should. And the truth is, I've been in a little bit of a recipe rut. I've been trying the same recipes over and over and over again, and I sort of haven't been experimenting as much as I used to. And that's why I am pleased to say that I have love, love, love today's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. So if you're not familiar with HelloFresh, it is a meal delivery service. So what that means is that every week they deliver these meal kits that give you exactly what you need to make the recipe that they also provide for you. So it's great for people like me that want to try new recipes all the time. Uh, they give you exactly what you need. So there's no wastage because you're not buying extra things that you don't necessarily need for that recipe. It's super flexible to use because you can just add meals whenever you want. You could subtract, you can skip a week if you feel like. All the meals come together in just about like 20 to 30 minutes. The process of delivery is super safe because they come, they drop it off. It's totally contactless. But the main advantage for me is that it really helps me break out of that rut and it helps me try new things that I wouldn't have made before. So if you want to try HelloFresh for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code NickLewis12 to get 12 free meals and delivery is completely free. So if you want to give that a go, feel free to click on the link in the description. Thanks HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Okay, tip number one is don't be afraid of dark colors or don't be afraid of sort of really saturated colors. I feel like conventional wisdom is that if you have a small room, if you have a small space, just paint it white. Because obviously if you're painting it white, it has a high LRV, which is a light reflectance value, which means light bounces off of it. It's gonna make the space feel more open and larger technically. However, I'm actually gonna disagree with that conventional wisdom. I think that when you go with something really dark or you're going with a little bit more of a saturated color, I think you just create a space that's a lot more interesting. Because sometimes I think that going with a reasonably boring space with white walls um, is worse than just committing to a darker color. So I look at the hallway behind me, it's actually quite a narrow apartment size hallway but I painted it in Hale Navy and most people would tell you that is a really stupid idea. Don't paint it in Hale Navy unless you've got tons and tons of light in there. And I added some lights to really bring it to life, but it was a big risk that totally paid off. I think these darker colors, they can create a really beautiful sort of moody space. They can create something really interesting. And again, the risk of being boring, in my opinion, is worse than it feeling small. I think you can create a really intimate space with sort of darker, more moodier colors, as well as reaching for maybe more saturated colors than just going with your typical white paint. So so I think the first biggest thing that needs to be said is don't be afraid of color, don't be afraid of dark colors. You don't have to paint white just because you live in a small space. Okay, tip number two for you all is to let your space breathe. So let's like give some space around the furniture pieces to allow for movement of people as well as some negative space in the environments. So oftentimes I think with really small spaces, they tend to look really cluttered when furniture pieces start knocking against each other, when you're not allowing for the proper clearances for people to move around properly. So really focusing on creating those pathways for people to move and to avoid clutter. Small spaces look smaller when they're too cluttered. And I'm not saying you have to be a minimalist. That's not necessarily what I'm saying, although that can be one route to go to create sort of more of uh, that breathing space. But just really being mindful of getting the right size furniture and allowing the right clearances around everything so people can move and the space just overall feels more relaxed. It'll feel more open, it'll feel less cluttered, and it won't feel so busy, and it won't feel as small as it would be if everything was just really heavy and cluttered. Okay, tip number three is to layer your lighting. Uh, this is a really common problem that I see in small spaces. Small spaces specifically run into problems when they aren't well lit. When you don't have a really good breakdown of sort of ambient light, task lighting, and accent lighting in a space, it can feel really boring. And I think small spaces, because you might not feel like you have the real estate for wall lamps or uh, table lamps, for example, you tend to rely on sort of that big light in the center of the room a little bit more. And also with larger spaces, you oftentimes might have bigger windows and you might have access to more natural light. But in a smaller space, especially if you're dealing with an apartment, um, 
um, that can be more of a challenge. So you might not have as many uh, large windows to be able to let in a lot of natural light. So that only makes it more crucial that in a small space, you need to really focus on layering your lighting. I have a video actually on interior design lighting mistakes that you might be making. Maybe check that video out because I go a lot more in depth there on different ways on how you can layer your lighting, which I think would be super helpful, but especially important so that your space doesn't feel really cramped. It's especially important to get your lighting right in a small space. So when you're looking at furniture in your space or you're looking at how to do your lighting in your space, really focus in on those floor lamps, those table lamps, um, any accent lighting above art, that can be super helpful. Just different pieces that you can do because you really want to prioritize that light and it's so easy in a small space to feel like you don't have enough room to be able to pull these things together. So really prioritize lighting. Okay, tip number four is to get the right sized rug. I've mentioned rugs in previous videos. I don't know if I've even done a dedicated rug video, which I should do. Um, get the right size rug. If you have a rug that is too small, which is usually what I'm talking about, it can make your space feel smaller. And so what you want to avoid is having that rug in the center of the room that's maybe just got the coffee table on it, but it doesn't have any of the other legs of the other furniture. That is a no-go. That is not how you should be styling your rug. The best thing for you to do, you really have a couple of really good options, I would say. Um, number one is to have all of the furniture legs on the rug. That is a great option might be harder to do in a small space. The thing that I really like to do in like a smaller space, like an apartment, um, is to have a rug where just the front two legs sort of fit on the front of, uh, of the rug. So you've maybe got half the furniture on the rug. I think that's a really good compromise because, um, you know, yes, your space feels really big and grand when you, ha when you have a rug that fits all four legs of all your different furniture pieces, your, your sofa, your sectional, your side chairs, whatever. Um, great, but probably not practical in an apartment or in a smaller space, but you don't want to go too small because if your rug just really sort of is like a little postage stamp kind of really too dinky in the center of the room um, that's not a good look either so I think the half solution is really a good option uh, for you if you have a smaller space okay and then tip number five is to use mirrors I really hesitated putting this on the list because I thought doesn't everybody know that but then I realized no not everybody does know that like I think strategically placed mirrors that's important, strategically placed. So mirrors are also a great way to really open up a space and sort of trick the eye into making a space feel a lot bigger than it is. It also really helps with lighting because you're able to sort of bounce the lighting in the room and make it feel a lot brighter than it is. Again, see the point before how sometimes small spaces um, can be not as well lit as if you have maybe this big grand house with kind of, sort of these big huge giant windows in them. So that's something really to consider is to strategically place mirrors. Now I will say, be very wary of mirrors pointing into each other because that can really mess with your head. And then the other thing to be careful of is just like the quantity of the mirror. So this tip is a good one, but just kind of be sparing. So one big statement mirror could be really important and can really sort of add to a space, make it feel a lot bigger, and that's awesome. Uh, sometimes people can go a little bit crazy on thinking, I got to make my space feel a lot bigger. So they'll put like 10 mirrors on the walls or something. You don't want the space to feel like a fun house. You want the place to feel like a home. And that means like one really beautiful mirror that sort of reflects your design style. I think is a really great choice and have fun with the mirror by the way it doesn't just have to be sort of a plain mirror important to have one just don't overdo it okay that's it for me for today you guys i'm going to point back to a video that is like super old but a lot of you really love and that's my favorite ikea products for apartments if you like this video i think you'll like that one there